So this one's going to be like a little bit different from uh, most of my usual tutorials. This is going to be a basic layout design tutorial. Now this is going to be for a three panel J card tape release for a record label called Worship the Void from Belfast, Northern Ireland. I like jobs like this. This is a strictly a layout design job. So I've been given all the artwork and all the assets to use for this um, and it's strictly up to me to lay it out and have a nice look and, and get a print ready. So to start off, we're gonna need to open uh, the templates for this. Now the templates uh, I'm gonna like leave in a folder, Google Drive folder at the description of this tutorial so you can use them. Uh, very handy little things, been using the same templates for years to be honest. So yeah, to get cracking I'm just gonna like fill in. I want the front of the J card to be white and the back to be black. Uh, luckily this client, he's a, a, a real easy guy to work with. He like uh, drew out and took a picture of his direction that he like wanted me to, to adhere to and that is so handy. I much prefer that. I, I would much rather every client um, draw out their their idea and their direction and give it to me than have to have like a back and forth tennis match of like emails and stuff, you know what I mean? Like this is just so much better. Like listen, we're we're designers and we're we're um, artists like we we work visually far better than like reading like reams and yards of text you know so to get started i start with the uh, the spine and uh I, i've used my own font here uh siege engine uh which you know what i'm gonna throw into that google drive folder for you as well because i'm feeling lovely uh i have that at 21 uh uh, font weight for uh, size for the, the spine and like usually as you know I, I, I try working the Fibonacci sequence so like my heaviest weight is going to be 21 and then next below that's going to be 13 and below that's going to be 8 so here I've actually used uh, a frame that I made uh, a number of years ago like I actually made this in college I think with like paper and India ink scanned it in uh, vectored it and uh, yeah, user for all these things. So I'm basically just like, I've laid over uh, my frame color lines over where the, the fold lines are gonna be in the actual uh, layout when it's when it's finished, or when it's printed, I should say. Now, the largest panel on the J card uh, is obviously gonna be the cover, like where you want the logo and the artwork for the record to be. Uh, it's the biggest, and it's gonna be the front of the tape. So I'm laying out the artwork here. Um, nice little Viking kind of uh, illustration. So I used the one with like, the mouse waves at the bottom because we wanted everything to look balanced and stuff. So I've like actually chopped in here another little bit of the frame, which I'm kind of uh, laying over at the edges of the artwork at the bottom because we don't want this to look like it was just all cobbled together and thrown in. Like we actually want like everything to be like nice and squished in together you know we want it all merged nice and happy um, and that's how we do it you know just like with your your texture and your different layers we want everything to to really like sit snugly together so once i've kind of laid out the, the front cover nothing too too um difficult um i start laying over the textures now I love this style of texture, it's um, like a Xerox style photocopy kind of vibe. Um, I believe this is texture, texture fabric. Um, I'm going to throw this in the folder for you as well. It's a nice little, it's A3 as well so you can use it for all your projects. So I just uh, fire that over, play with the blend modes, you know, your light and your screen is going to take all the dark out of it and your, uh, your multiply and dark and it's going to take all the light out of your layer. Um, I assume like most of you probably know that at this stage. So yeah, then uh, here I'm just kind of like farting around, making a little box again out of my frame. Uh, this is quite grassroots, small enough record label. Um, most little labels are gonna probably do for first couple of releases. They'll probably print about 50 max for, for a first run of tapes or records or CDs or whatever. Maybe not vinyl, but uh, tapes or CDs are probably do about 50. It's always nice, you know, for smaller runs of tapes to have like a hand numbered little box in the back out of 50, you know, so the, the man who runs the label is going to be able to take his Sharpie out and once they get all the duplicates back from the pressing plant, 
he will hand number them off one fifty, and it's just a nice little touch, you know. It's like when you buy like a nice print, you know, and it's hand numbered. It's, it, it, it makes it that bit more unique, I guess. So that's all I've done there with like a nice little box and a little bit of black leather font to kind of like fit in with the, the rest of the layout. Now I've moved on to the track listing. Now I was kind of thinking of playing around with a few old English style fonts for this, but um, the, the label actually sent me the track listing in quite a nice little little font that uh, I didn't know the name of and I was quite pressed for time. So I decided it was probably the best thing to do, or I decided the best thing to do was probably to go in and just uh, isolate the, the black out of the PNG and delete the background essentially, just selecting all the white, delete the, the background and copy and paste in each track name individually at the same size, you know, because you want them all to be the same size. So I like pasted them all in one by one. This is quite time intensive. But it's nice because there's 10 songs in the album. So what I then decided to do was take the first five layers of the first five tracks, justify them to the left, and take tracks six to 10, justify them to the right, and then lay them nicely so that they fit on either side of the, the, lip, the lip of the, the J card. You can kind of see here, I kind of play around with different sizes and stuff. Um, Again, these, these aren't fonts, so I'm just playing with individual layers, which I've then merged uh, into left and right, one to five, six to ten. Uh, I threw the label's logo square in the middle. You know, it's, it's very nice to kind of like uh, learn your your grid layout and stuff. Really. You probably should be, be working with a grid. Again, this is a very small job, and I was just kind of like winging it a bit because you want it to look rough and ready when it's for black metal. and, and uh, stuff like crust or like hardcore you, you want it to look like cobbled together like like someone made it in their basement but like you still want it to all the layout and everything to be perfect here i'm throwing the the record labels kind of like uh, i don't know what the name for them is a, a release number possibly and it's a wtv worship the void 001 is their first release so i'll, I'll crack that on the, the spine there so now I'm taking my, my different uh, textures from the front of the cover and I'm throwing them into the back. Which again is essentially, it's mirror flipped and inverted. So when you take the front of the J card, you take the tape out, you take the J card out, the black side is going to be the inside. So it is all flipped if you get me the way it actually is folded. Again, I'm referring to the labels directions here. Uh, to see what sort of idea you had for the inside and uh, yeah just start going for it now I'm using uh, a logo here belonging to the record label uh, by a good friend of mine Lewis Pinto um, Logotomy Designs from Portugal he's a phenomenal logo designer I, I highly recommend checking him out so I've used that for the, the inner lip and I'm throwing the artist picture here a nice creepy black metal thing again playing with my blend modes I'm using uh, I think a screen or yeah, yeah, screen and light mode play around with because they get rid of the, the blacks and the darks in the layer. So you're just left with your lights in this case, it's, it's whites and grey. Again, some layouts can be quite um, text heavy and listen, they can be a nightmare. But at the same time, I kind of like doing text heavy layout design as well. But in this case, we're very lucky. It's 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 quite minimal on the on the text. It's uh, instruments by this lad, intro by this lad, which I fired in. Happy days. Uh, that's thirteen points, I believe, in size or punts, whatever it's called. And uh, that's because I used twenty one for the the info on the spine, which I'm gonna copy and paste now uh, into the inner spine. So I've used 21 weight there and 13 for the details and then for the contacts I'm going to use another step down on the Fibonacci sequence which is 8. So it's like you know you're 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, uh, 13, 21, 34, 55. You want it to look balanced and using something like the Fibonacci sequence you don't exactly have to, there's all different things you can use. Um, but I find that just works perfectly. See the size there, I'm, I'm, I'm justifying my contact 
uh, text right up to the to be aligned with the uh, the credits on the inside. Now I've thrown my logo in here. Uh, sometimes it's kind of cheeky, but like I decided I'd fire it in because it's nice to put your own mark on things you make. And uh, yeah, the the guy at the label, Sam Man, he was like, yeah, absolutely, leave it in. Happy days. That's another little bit of promo, you know. Like the contacts I I, I put in the artist's contact the label's contact and my own contact because you never know someone could pick it up and be like oh i like to look i like to look at this uh, the tape that is and see the contact details for the design on it and say uh oh, sure i have a project i'll get on to him now again just playing with my frames i kind of thought that the the very dark image there was quite lost a little bit in all the grit and texture and darkness so uh again i'm just chopping out bits of my frame firing it in you know just to kind of uh, only at the bottom as well just to kind of like lift it up a bit out of the, the rest of the layout yeah so as you can see here I'm just starting to clean up a good bit of the uh, the grit because I do like to go a bit mad and a bit crazy with my texture and all um, and then a lot of the time I do find myself kind of toning it back at the end of a design like and, and that's fine go mad at the start because it gives you an idea of like what sort of like look you're going for and you can always just like crank the neck in a bit and, and, and tone it down and uh, you really end up with something like nice and solid looking so yeah just for a final pass then go over your uh, your layout merge all your layers together for this one I just uh, merged them together made them black and white, whacked up the contrast, just kind of get rid of a bit of the grain detail. And uh, I basically turned, or uh, transformed into CMYK. Work in RGB all the time, because when you're working on RGB, you can see the color on your screen, especially uh, if you have a nice monitor that uh, will display true color. You'll see what you're working in. Then you um, uh, convert it into CMYK for print. RGB is going to be for digital monitor uh, art, whereas anything printed using like, what is it, cyan, magenta, uh, yellow, and K is for black, I think. Um, yeah, you're, you want to figure out what color everything is going to be in, on the monitor, and then uh, change it to CMYK for print. Luckily, in this case, it was just a black and white thing, so like that didn't really matter. But I still transformed it into CMYK and in the PDF file. So you send the PDF t to the printer. You can send like PNGs, high res PNGs of the artwork to the client for their own kind of use, but the PDF is going to the printer. Mm -hmm.